Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Wabachaw. And, you know, I just want to take a little bit of time to talk about uh, a build that I'm planning on playing in uh, the upcoming Incursion League. Cold Snap. Yeah. A lot of a lot of things go on with Cold Snap. <laughs> you know, a lot of skill changes and everything. Uh, but before I get into this, I kind of want to touch on, you know, uh, just a couple things. First off, the whole reason I haven't really been making YouTube content is I am uh, extremely frustrated right now. Um, with the uh, lack of quality that I can uh, record. Like, there is a very good chance that during this video, while I am recording it, or when I edit it and when I go to upload it, well, actually, just during the editing, and it's not during the upload, but the audio is going to come out of sync with, like, the actual actions on the screen. Um, so if I, ever, if I ever, like, record gameplay all of a sudden like the shattering explosions the the gameplay effects will be out of sync with the with the uh, with the video or you know the video will be out of sync with the audio same reason why i actually don't even really use the face uh a face cam anymore because because uh, my mouth just goes out of sync with the audio so i really really dislike that and um, you know, I've tried to figure out the best way to combat that. Uh, unfortunately, I've just I've kind of gotten to a point where I feel that I just need a new PC. I have a very old PC. I have a fourth gen i7 with a GTX 760. It's old, and I was going to get a new PC earlier this year. Unfortunately, I had some things uh, inhibit me from doing that, and I don't think I'm going to be getting a new PC uh, for a while, which really sucks because. You know, I would really like to get back into making uh, YouTube content and, and putting time into it and streaming. Unfortunately, you know, I'm just, uh, when it when it comes down to it, the quality is super important to me. So, anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. So, I want to play Cold Snap in the Incursion League. This is a little uh, speculatory. This is speculation, speculatory, whatever. This is speculation for... Uh, the Incursion League because Cold Snap I think is is really cool and um, I know people are super hyped about traps which you know don't get me wrong uh, I agree traps are in a really good spot they're going to be in a very good spot in 3.3 and I think that I think GGG has done a great job of finding a good balance between having like the spammable traps you know no cooldown and the big boy eight second traps i think that's brilliant for gameplay and i think that'll make it really fun for most people um but cold snap kind of kind of got me going a little bit because you know we've seen the screenshot where the aoe is just gigantic and cold snap seems like a much better targeted vortex at this point and a vortex as a skill is something that i've liked in fact um you know, when it comes to, like, what is satisfying to play in Path of Exile, shattering mobs is very satisfying. Uh, but mobs dying from degen, just, like, near instantly, is is very satisfying as well. So, that's kind of what I'm going to be going for with Cold Snap. A lot of people are thinking Cold Snap traps. Unfortunately, I don't think Cold Snap Traps is really inherently a good idea because uh, traps work when you could get a lot out and they could all blow up at the same time and they could hit the same target. So, like, for example, uh, if you, you know, throw eight arc traps at once with a with a cluster trap in 3.3, all the arcs are going to hit one target. But Cold Snap doesn't really get that benefit because uh, the bulk of your damage is going to be coming from the dot from the damage over time, okay? And and so you're not going to get overlapping damage sources because it's just going to take the greatest one and go from there. So, so you get no benefit out of really spamming Cold Snap uh, or having a lot of instances of Cold Snap going on outside of its AOE coverage. Uh, so, so I have decided to go with a self-cast Trickster Cold Snap build, and and I've pretty much gone to this point. Uh, we can go ahead and look at it here. The tree, you know, this is this is the one thing that I kind of dislike about Poe at this point uh, is that um, 
the trees for a lot of spellcasters all look entirely the same. Uh, this one is a little bit different because I'm not going crit. And it's because crit won't really benefit the damage over time aspect of cold snap. So I am going for elemental overload, which, you know, obviously the 40% more elemental damage would benefit the damage over time aspect of cold snap. Another thing um, that I am doing with this, and I actually have a document uh, that I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant about putting it in the description um, below. If I put it in the description, it will probably be the day that we get the patch notes because, like I said, this is I'm speculating here on the power of Cold Snap. So I don't want to provide a source and get people like super into this if the patch notes hit and then it's not nearly as good as I think it could be. Um, but so the build that I am looking at is you know, obviously a Cold Snap. Cold Snap tri Trickster um, with the 76% chance spell block. And, uh, you know, somewhere between the range of, this is this is low on life right now, uh, but anywhere between 6 to 7.5k health at about level like 90 to 95 with about 1,000 mana with Mind Over Matter. Now, the nice thing about... Um, trickster is you know when i was looking at the ascendancies for cold snap or what she could use with cold snap I, I feel like so much of the power is in its degen that none of the other ascendancies really seem to offer a lot in terms of of that um not even not even like a cultist which a cultist is probably the one that i would maybe consider but i feel like a cultist is much more defensive but Prolonged paying on Trickster is just 15% more damage over time and 10% reduced damage taken from damage over time. And then the skill effect duration, which obviously both... Uh, uh, the skill effect and the da more damage over time, good for the cold snap. And then the 10% reduced damage taken from damage over time is also good because uh, with a Trickster, you're going to have a lot of regen... You're going to have reduced damage taken over time. And you're not going to be really uh, spamming your spell. You're going to just be going for like as much uh, damage as possible. This means that um, it should be pretty easy for you to run Righteous Fire. And then Righteous Fire obviously gives you uh, um, more spell damage while it is running. Essentially, it's the same as going low life. Um, and it's it doesn't seem too hard. And the other thing that I kind of got away from was originally I wanted to use curses, but my problem with curses is that they they get hurt really bad, or they are um, they are ineffective versus bosses. And I want consistent damage, uh, especially when you have things like frost bomb or Elemental Equilibrium, which I will uh, get into that maybe um, near the end of this video. When you have ways to reduce um, or remove a um, certain amount of resist regardless of curse effectiveness or anything else, I think it's just overall better. So if you could use, you know, like Frost Bomb in conjunction with a Orb of Storms and a Malachi's Artifice, the uh, unique ring created by Ziggy D. Um, if you could use those in conjunction, that would just be better than you running Frostbite. And you only really want the Frostbite for bosses or tougher mobs. So those same mobs are going to have reduced curse effectiveness. But of course, the re reduced curse effectiveness doesn't do anything versus Frost Bomb or Elemental Equilibrium. So. The tree is pretty straightforward. Um, you probably just go Patient Reaper. Oh, no, no. First, you would go Swift Killer, and then you would go Patient Reaper, and then Prolonged Pain. And then your last Ascendancy, uh, I would just go Weave the Arcane. You could do something else if you want more damage. You could probably just pick up these two nodes right here. Uh, but this doesn't really do anything for you because of our gear choice. 
and I guess I'll go ahead and talk about that now. It's a pretty straightforward tree. Um, yeah, cool. So, our gear choice. I have already set up a lot of things on this uh, that I'm, like I said, it's going to be in the document for me. Um, at first, I was looking at using uh, Might of the Meek Jewels um, because Might of the Meek is incredibly powerful in this uh, starting area. Uh, I actually, initially, I looked at running this as an Ascendant, so that made it made a little bit more sense to use Might of the Meek as an Ascendant. Uh, but as I kept thinking about it and I kept looking at everything, I just decided that Trickster would be better. Um, and then, you know, the other thing about Maya the Meek is often, you know, if you're looking at using Maya the Meek, you, what you should really do is um, you should count up what Maya the Meek actually gives you, right? So, like, for example, if you put a Maya the Meek right here and you put a Maya the Meek right here, they're going to give you 50% increase effect on these life nodes okay right here um these five that you see the four in blue and one in green and then over here it's going to be the same thing so they're each going to give you two percent life per node so that means the jewel itself is giving you ten percent life uh and then on top of you know whatever else like if for in this instance it would be regen um and in this instance it would be resist and everything else um but you know my the meek um it's a really interesting unique jewel but in all honesty like uh, a decently rolled uh rare jewel is pretty competitive with my the meek without the downside so i decided just to go with the rare jewels and then on top of that um i don't i have a feeling that cold snap is going to be very popular uh, that doesn't that kind of plays into this decision, but abyss jewels are just so much more popular now that rare jewels the traditional jewels aren't they're not valued as much so I'm looking forward to picking up some you know good rare jewels for in the range of 20 to 30 chaos, which I think is um, like really reasonable and they're pretty easy to craft. I think they're much easier to craft than abyss jewels uh, that's just completely anecdotal. Might not be true, but I think they're easier to craft than abyss jewels. So, so yeah. The other thing that we're going to be doing with this is we're actually going to be using Winter Bounty, uh, Winter's Bounty, because uh, Winter's Bounty, you know, in Patch 3.3 is going to make it to where Cold Snap, um, instead of utilizing Frenzy Charges and granting Frenzy Charges, it's going to utilize Power Charges and grant Power Charges. And, and the big reason for that is since we're in this part of the tree, if I, I, I want to grab the power charges so I could have a lot of power charges, so I have opportunities to uh, use cold snap, and then I won't have any fluctuation in my damage whenever I'm sacrificing frenzy charges, which I mean, it would be really negligible to be honest, but uh, enough that I would rather just switch it over. And then the fact that I would be able to pick up power chargers at a certain point um, makes it makes my uptime on elemental overload high enough as it is. Um, I feel like this build will actually play a lot like a caustic arrow build, um, except that you have to you have to aim with your cursor, um, but with the expanding AOE, not nearly as much. So. I'm sorry if this is all over the place. So we're going to be using a rare scepter or a rare wand. Uh, it's just something that gives us as much spell damage as possible. Uh, we don't need to worry about crit. We don't need to worry about a pen. We don't need to worry about anything else. Uh, spell damage and attack speed. If you go with a wand, you don't really need the attack speed. You could probably, uh, you know, you could do something else. A Saffle's Frame. Um, you know, this is just an all around, a, a pretty good shield. Uh, it gives you, you know, all resist four and, and, um, and it's going to be inexpensive. It's going to be very accessible even to, even to newer players, as long as you're in a trade league, uh, mask of the stitch demon. Now this, this helm, um, 
makes it to where, and I, I created this in uh, Path of Building, so hopefully we'll get this pretty soon. But this helm gives you essentially 1% life regen per 500 maximum energy shield. And in my build right here, we could look, it says that I have a 3,500 maximum energy shield. So essentially this helm would give me 7% life regen. In addition, this helm makes it to where your intelligence gives you life the way strength would but it takes away the mana that you would get from intelligence and it would takes away the life that you would get from strength. The mana isn't too big of a deal because we're not gonna be spamming a ton. We're just going to be, um, we're just gonna be placing cold snaps uh, as we're progressing through maps and zones. So, and also for the, for purposes of when I did this in Path of Building, I used Vortex and I just looked at the numbers of the screenshot that Bex provided for a level 20 cold snap and I compared that to the dot damage of a Vortex, which is the the level 20 cold snap that Bex shared was equivalent dot damage wise to about a level 23 Vortex. I think 23 volt Vortex is a little bit higher, but not, not enough. So Mask of the Stitch Demon you know, this is something that we're going to be going for Incursion League. However, I managed to get it cool uh, via trading or just through the Temple of Atsuwali. I, I, I don't know how to say it quite yet. I'll get it down, though. Um, another nice thing. So we are going to be using some rare pieces. Uh, obviously, a a hybrid rare Val Regalia. Now, this is mostly just because we're going to be, you know, wanting to get as much energy shield as possible and so we could get life regen this you know this is really good defensively so anything with intelligence life and um as much energy shield as possible these are usually not really that expensive a uh, hybrid is not even though it's in a great place uh relatively to where it's been in the past hybrid is not really that valued overall this could eventually be a shaper or um, I think it's a shaper, either a shaper or elder chest piece that you could craft that could give you additional regen if you would like. Uh, fingerless, silk, fingerless silk gloves. Obviously you could trade out this for sorcerer gloves if you want to get more ES. You know, the big thing about ES is you want to hit uh, a threshold of 500. So if, if you could drop um, all the ES off of something and still have, you know, say 3,000 ES, then you should do that. But if, if well, I okay, could, let me rephrase. If you're at 3,450 ES, you should not really worry about ES on a certain piece of gear. Uh, you could change that for something else if you have something better, for example. You get what I mean. I don't know. Maybe you don't. Rainbow Strides. Uh, those are the next things. Rainbow Strides, these should also be really um, accessible and uh, affordable in a, in a league because they're not really valued, but they're going to give us spell block. Uh, Rainbow Strides plus Sapples Frame is going to give us 100, oh, anywhere from 95 to 105 um, block chance applied to spells. So this can easily spell uh, cap you. They're pretty good, they give you ES, they give you mana, um, and they give uh, all resist and 25 move speed. Not too bad. Uh, the Anvil. Now, Anvil is, um, again, another really affordable, uh, unique. Uh, they're 1C, you could mass corrupt them, you could get chance to block spells, you could get one max res, you could get frenzy charge. Honestly, you might be able to buy a Frenzy Charge or a one max res anvil for pretty cheap if you decided to go with that in this build, if you wanted to do it, which I'm going to do. Cool. Uh, you know, it's just gonna give, gonna give you max block and gonna give you a chance to block spells. Okay. Uh, the ring that I put on here, I ignore the resist portion of this just because I only did it for Wise Oak. Um, but, as much energy shield, you know, or in an, an amount of energy shield that allows you to break that 500 threshold for whatever percentage you might be at. Okay. Um, intelligence, obviously intelligence is going to give you life. Uh, and um, 
uh, because of Mask of the Stitch Demon, and then also as much life as possible as a prefix, and then the suffixes could be whatever. Resist doesn't even matter. I have Dream Fragments set up here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be using Dream Fragments, but Dream Fragments are good, and again, something very accessible. And with the um, with the addition or the update to Val Implicits for Rings, as mentioned by Bex, this is something that you could probably mass corrupt as well. And uh, you could get cannot be inflicted with bleeding, etc., etc. And yeah, I, I just think this is uh, this is definitely uh, something that you could change out for another rare piece. You could you could put in another unique ring if you want. As I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, using Malachi's Artifice to give you some more single target whenever you do need it. Um, but other than that, should be fine. Just a regular belt. ES, as much life as possible. Resist. Doesn't need to be anything else. Um, obviously, um, increased life recovery rate off of uh, an Elder base would be ideal. Um, but not necessary. But it would be really good. A well-rolled Rumi's Concoction. This is just going to give you uh, quite a bit of spell block. As you can see, we are at 76% chance to block spells. And it actually gives us 29% chance to block spells. So you, But you would have to get a max rolled one. So I would definitely drop a little bit of currency on this. But for the build and how it works, definitely worth it. Um, wow, sorry about that. Uh, you have some... You have some room in your uh, flasks that you could use. I don't really have these activated, um, but I would actually only really worry about using a wise oak with equal resists, or at least fires this being your lowest, once you're able to run RF, because this makes a really big deal. Uh, in fact, you can see in this build, that I have set up right here, if I pop the Wise Oak and the Ruby Flask, um, we have a lot of um, life regen. We have over, I don't know what's going on here. We have over 10% um, life regen with RF going, which is, again, pretty good. And, you know, you, uh, you move some things around, um, you get, you know, plus one resist on an amulet, you get um, a, a Shaper Elder chess piece that gives you that regen, it's going to be um, pretty, pretty good. So, should should be pretty alright. Uh, the jewels, like I said, just something with life and uh, damage, coal damage, spell damage, spell damage while holding a shield, damage over time, area damage, traditional damage, what else? Am I missing anything? Yeah, any anything like that, all of those will work. Coal damage, I think I said that already. Uh, we are going to be using one intuitively, or I will be, at least in this, right over here to grab this uh, frenetic and infused, and that should actually give you a, a good indication of how out of potentially out of sync this video is with the audio. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I kind of shot through this. Hold on a second. Hello, boys, could we stop yelling? That'd be great. Tristan, stop yelling. Go to the room and play in there. Dope. That's another thing that stops me from making videos, honestly. Uh, so yeah. Cold Snap, Trickster, um, not traps, and just focusing on damage over time. You know, the other nice thing about this, I'll go ahead and uh, put this in here, or I'll just, you know, kind of mention this as well. The damage that I have set up and figured out right now is on a five link, and it is for just a potentially level 20 cold snap. Now, obviously, the opportunity that you have here is that we have some really powerful corruptions in the Incursion League. And I kind of like the idea of getting some, you know, like baseline of like, or just like just buying all the hybrid chess pieces that say have 450 ES and 90 life 
throwing a jeweler's touch on them, going to the temple and just corrupting them and hoping we get a double uh, corruption. Because if we do get a double corruption and we do get, say, um, duration or area of effect or whatever, any of these corruptions that GGG um, you know, showed recently, this all of a sudden goes from a level 23, you know, potentially up to about a level 27. And the, your damage goes up considerably. And if we're able to do that and we get a six link, your damage goes up even further. So, um, you know, this is just, you know, something that I'm like really looking into. Uh, an RF cold snap you know, <laughs> mind over matter, uh, life-based trickster build. And like I said, it should, it should play a lot like caustic arrow, um, or poison arrow, whichever you uh, refer to it as. And, uh, it, you know, it should, it should be pretty good. And, you know, this is only level 89. So you obviously have some, a little bit of room in your passive tree and everything. And all the uniques are pretty, accessible in my opinion mask of the stitch demon i don't know how accessible that's gonna be i'm kind of taking a chance on that so let me know what you think down in the comments below um let me know what you guys are playing in uh incursion league i'd imagine a lot of people are playing traps but honestly this is, seems like a good league to almost play anything as path of exile has been doing a pretty good job at the past I mean, for a while now, I don't, as much as I don't think people want to admit it, but I think they've been doing a good job of, um, of making the game as diverse as it can be. And yeah, so anyway, there might be some other videos coming out this week. We'll see. We'll see how this one goes. We'll see if I even put this one out. All right, guys. See you later.